It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and day one of phase three in Del Mar. We are now breaking ground in the backyard. Uh, this also, as you recall, those of you that watched the, um, the pre-demo video, this was a dead lawn, more of the dreaded bird of paradise, a bunch of camellia, society garlic, um, Oriums, just you know your typical usual suspects you can see this pile of debris here on the tarp this was just some extra detail work that we did this morning removing more of the bird of paradise um, roots and some other miscellaneous crap out of the yard so i wanted you to see this before we got you know dove in too deep um, because it really was a hot mess. Now, what often happens when you do a landscape, when you know, you're know you demoing and pulling a lot of things out, is you go down a bit of a rabbit hole and you can find some, some problems. Um, his fence is gonna need repainted. So that's okay though, because we aren't going to plant anything too close to the fence. So when it comes time to make those repairs, shouldn't impact the landscape at all. So that's good. Also, these boulders that were here in the yard, I don't know if I mentioned this in phase two, but these are three rivers. Three rivers was the first type of rock and flagstone that Greg and I ever used. It was a dollar a pound, which for those of you that, are, that don't know, that's really, really pricey. Uh, it would have literal, um, like, fossils in it you know I, you can find I mean just it's so interesting and pretty um, so you can't get through this, this rock anymore it's not available but it is pretty special so I'm excited to work with it you can see how beautiful it is over there on the rocks pool the waterfall fountain fall so okay uh, we are now in the process of bringing in soil Greg just dropped two and a half yards out front, so we have to, that's another thing, this, this phase is gonna take longer because we have to wheel everything, obviously, from the front to the back. So we are going um, to be working on a minimum of five yards of soil today, probably bring more tomorrow for a total of seven or eight before we're done. And you are going to see some major shape taking form. Once we get the soil pulled back, we will then start manipulating our boulders and the plants are coming tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna check in with you all again at the end of the day today so that you can see what a difference a few hours can make. One more time. <laughs> Your tongue doesn't stick out when you do it. Is it, it supposed says, to? Ah! No, it doesn't have to. Like, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> You can do it. Can you push? Can you push? Seriously, I don't have the upper body strength. I can't do it. I can't push. You gotta push. I can't take it. I love Okay, yeah, no, no. I'm Okay, okay, we have had so much fun today. I think because it's cooler. Look at me in my little Henley uh, overshirt. Feels amazing. Uh, we got all of the boulders that Greg brought in the other day staged. This is, um, yeah, five, two and a half, five yards of soil here. Then the guys are working on offloading the other two and a half into the, into the flower beds. But yeah, it's really, really starting to take 
some wonderful shape. Even these pots on the posts are looking really good. You see we've got our aloe banesii planted already. Um, the, as I said earlier, the rest of the plants are coming tomorrow. And you know, some of you mentioned in the front yard video, oh, I thought you were gonna put in pathways. Well, it, you know, no. Uh, <laughs> There are natural pathways through the 3 8 inch rocks and that's what's going to happen back here too. I'm already identifying a way through the garden like this and around through here. So we don't always have to put down, you know, delineated paths. It doesn't always have to be flagstones or rubble with DG. There's so much going on here. He has a beautiful, I know you can't see it for all the dirt, but there's a beautiful flagstone patio. And frankly, I just really don't think we need to add any more elements in the garden itself. So that was, that's, you know, kind of the thinking out front too. I just wanted to keep it very low profile and, and there's just was no need to do any uh, formal pathways through the garden space. Some of you ask too, some, uh, another really interesting question to me was, how do I decide if we're gonna do a dry stream bed or if we're gonna put in a park bench or if we're gonna do you know, the flagstone paths or the DG paths? Well, I don't. It's typically the client that decides um, what elements they would like to see in the garden. I often make suggestions and I would say probably about 75% of the time I am actually on a budget where I have very strict parameters with which I can purchase materials and plants and, and so on. So this is all not just me coming in and just doing what I want as much as it looks that way. I really do talk to my clients and we do have discussions and we do have budgets. So if you don't see a dry stream bed or flagstone, it's probably because it was determined by myself and the client that those elements weren't necessary to um, complete a successful design. So hope that helps. Feel free to ask anything you want in the comments. I'll do my very best to answer all of your questions. Oh yes, and also another decision that I made today is around this gorgeous pool. I'm not gonna plant anything. You know, you can't see unless you literally come right up and look down. And who's going to do that? Also, we need access here to trim this hedge that's sticking through from the neighbors. Not only that. Oh yeah, and the hedge would, you know, really um, mask anything, you know, that I tried to plant in here. So what we'll do is we'll put down some weed barrier fabric since we're not planting to really discourage on you know onslaught of weeds and we'll just rock around the perimeter of the pool this is going to be a fantastic bed with something amazing in it over here um, thinking aloe ferox would be really spectacular in this cutout and then i'll plant the crap out of this bed in here this is a lot of real estate in here i think i'm going to work this adorable bird bath into um into the landscape down here it no it's not stuck here it's just staged here um and this bird this crane Caw! um i will be also working this in somewhere into the landscape and then maybe rudy i know you're watching um i think that a trio of pots would look really spectacular right here in this space. So we can talk about that maybe um, post installation. I can come back and add some really beautiful full pots. So that's it, we're, we're cleaning up today. Greg's been working on capping the irrigation and repairing, no, no, repairing some broken lines. Uh, so he will continue with irrigation. I have also decided to go with Petalanthus bracteus along that side wall. Again, budgets and priorities uh, went into that decision. So we're going to be doing some intentional irrigation over there too that I'm going to want to share with you when the time comes. Um, let's see, what else, Hanny? Can you think of anything else? You can see a lot of solar light fixtures. So these will either go back into the design or the client will decide to buy, um, buy new ones. That'll be up to them. But yeah, this is gonna be, this can be a knockout. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
This is Laura Eubanks on day one in, on phase three in Del Mar in the backyard with Team DFS and your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.